So you can also uh, look at rolling resistance. This is what you, if you look into very basic uh, books on, on mechanical engineering. Uh, but the thing is actually that uh, when you pop this in the equations, and uh, uh, well, it ends up with an expression like this. You can't remember that, but but it requires uh, iteration to solve it. But but the thing is, it's it's not dominant. Actually, the rolling resistance for a wind turbine car is is not very big unless you drive it at very low winds because there's a wind factor here. But if you drive it at 10 meters per second, it's not the, the main thing. Actually, the drag on the car is a big thing. I think here we have... Uh, ah, I'll show that later. How fast will it go? Well, before we built the car, we did a lot of computations. We thought it's... it's I think we could go 100%. But um, we ended up at uh, 53 at a wind speed last year of 10 meters per second. And the, the winning team of last year had uh, peaked out at 65%. One race with that. So uh, we were quite off this 100% thing. So um, we did a lot of thinking in the car and uh, came to the conclusion that uh, the transmission losses were way bigger than we thought. And actually the car drag also turned out to be big. And when you fiddle around with the numbers and do it in a computer, you can say that, okay, if we, if we cut car drag in half and transmission losses in half, actually we could go from 53 to 100%. So that was actually what we were aiming at um, this year. So this is actually for the wind car last year, roughly the parameters, like uh, uh, we have computed them. So it corresponded pretty well to a velocity rate of 0.5. This is at 10 meters per second, and this is an actual induction. So you see that the best actual induction for our car is around 0.2. So, and uh, the losses connected with uh, this, this is relative losses in the system, and I've got drag losses here, and uh, transmission losses up here, and rolling resistance losses here. This is for 10 meters per second. It might look like, okay, it's, it's a, little bit, a little bit below 10%, but it's actually not moving stuff around a lot, even, even if I take it out, the whole thing. So, and these losses are, are scaled the way so that this loss plus this loss plus this loss is, is one. So this is, so we can see that for the actual induction that gives us the fastest car, the transmission loss is really, really the big one. So we have to work on transmission. So we thought we did that this year, but it turned out not to be very effective anyway. So we ended up at uh, only 35% of the wind speed. That was a step back, but it was at 5 meters per second. So, it's so what can you do? We haven't driven it in uh, higher winds yet. But the race results, in case anybody is interested in that, uh, we, we ended up at the second and the third place with our cars, and we got the design award. We had uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, carbon fiber in the car, I think they like that. Uh, the winners were Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, and they have built this uh, very, very neat car. And you can probably Google it and find, find pictures of it. So, yeah, well, this talk was given uh, in Stowling and to a lot of uh, wind turbine uh, race guys. So I, I just I had a lot of discussions with uh, many people on how to solve these things, and and the thing most most people do wrong here is is they are using something with kinetic energy and they are looking in a reference frame where the car is moving and they are confusing themselves. And this is uh, you get all kinds of wrong results by doing that. So lessons learned are here: always step back and, and look at it with an open mind and, and don't assume knowing anything. At least not working with stuff like this. So this is uh, this has been good for me at least also. So, well, what else can you do? Now I don't remember if you, I don't know if you remember uh, how the car looked, but I've just taken the car, swapped it now. Now the blue wheels are turning the, the ground, and the red wheel is in the air. So what happens if we do that? Is this thing? Oh, now it goes along with the wind, faster than the wind, if that is the wind. 
and um, that's kind of neat. It's a funny tool you can sit down and play with it at home. So uh, the thing is, uh, can this be done? And um, if it's going faster than the wind, in the direction of the wind, then actually the two velocities come towards you when you sit in the car from the same side. That's actually what I did the analysis for previously. So I'm going to skip it. Uh, the result is still the same. Uh, it's, it's, uh, that was a general derivation. There was no, no, uh, no hocus pocus last time. So this is the way it's, it's looking. So, so what you have here is we have the same, the, the same magnitude of the forces acting on the vehicle. And then you have two different velocities. And power equals to force times relative velocity. <coughs> So if you want to generate power, you need to generate, you need to generate it where you have a big velocity difference, because then for the same force you can get more power. So you generate your force, your, your power at the medium that moves fast with respect to you. So that's this one. Then you lose something in transmission and use some of some of it. And there where you use it, you can get more force per invested power if you spend it where the relative velocity is low. If you have a pu to push a car with uh, 10 newton, and you just uh, you're not uh, you're just barely moving, it's not hard. But if you have to do it at 35 kilometers per hour, it, it takes a lot of uh, work or, or power for you. So this is the general thing: generate the power at the, the high velocity medium, and do the propulsion at the low, no low velocity one. So the winter winter the car looked like this from the ground and from the car itself. So this was the high velocity thing was the air and the low velocity thing was the ground. So we want to generate the power in the wind here and make the propulsion at the ground here. But if we switch it around and see from the, this side, now we have the wind still going this way, but now the car is going even faster that way. So when we sit on the car, we have the ground coming towards you at this velocity and and then the car velocity minus the free, free stream wind velocity coming in, like that. So now the big velocity is the ground. So now we want to generate your power here. And now we want to push the medium here. So now we need a propeller on the roof. So, so if you need a propeller on the roof and you want to go that way, then you need the force that way. So you're going to do that with the propeller. And then you generate. The, 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 the force from, for, for using, so for making the power at the rear wheel is uh, this force, generation force, rolling resistance, and you will have a drag also. But generally, I, I try to do computations for this case. Generally, the rolls are switched around when you do that, this, this, this thing. The ground is going very fast towards you, so actually rolling resistance is much more important here. But, I'll skip that. So, generation at the wheels. The, wheel, the relative velocity to the wheels is the vehicle velocity. And proportion in the air, the air velocity is car velocity minus the free stream velocity. And now this, is, this needs to be bigger. We need to move faster than the air in order to for the velocities to come from the same side. So, I stick those into the general equation and end up with something like this. It looks almost like the other one. And you can see also for this case, when the efficiency is 10 to 1, the velocity ratio tends to infinity. So this is exactly the same theory, just going uh, turning things upside down. <laughs>